Welcome to a series called The End of Times. We're going through the book of Revelation verse by verse to see what it is we can expect to happen. But more importantly, what it is we should be doing to prepare for Jesus' second coming. And as we've gone through this book of Revelation, we've come to a very critical chapter, chapter 17, that is a great confusion in the world. As we've gone through this, we spent several episodes talking about the harlot and who she is and what she does and everything that's on her and she's holding and everything, what it represents. It all represents something. And then we talked about the ten horns. And clearly, these are ten kings. There are ten kings who will make up the beast. They, they will be ruled, they will give their authority uh, to Satan, and Satan will give them their authority. And it's an agreement that they make with him in this. And we know. You know, when I talked about these seven, everybody's like, oh, it's this, or oh, it's that, or, you know, stop. Stop with that. It's nonsense. You're just being fed the, the crud that your, your modern church garbage that they've been feeding you. It is satanic. Get, the sooner you recognize that this is a spiritual war, the better off you're going to be. It is a satanic thing, and it clearly says, clearly says, in Revelation 12, 3, And another sign appeared in heaven. Behold, a great fiery red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven diadems on his heads. And it later says in 9, So the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old called the devil and Satan who deceives the whole world. He, he was cast to the earth and his angels were cast out with him. So now, just you have to see that. It's a satanic thing. The seven heads specifically are satanic, seven satanic kingdoms who have conquered, scattered, destroyed, enslaved, a combination of all those things to Israel. That's what the, all of the beasts are. And when we saw this beast in Daniel, it had one head and now it has seven heads. Now that's very significant. It's extremely significant because what we're going to see with these seven heads is, is a lot more than what you think it is. So we're just going to pick it up where we left off. 17, starting verse 7. But the angel said to me, Why do you marvel? I will tell you the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carries her, which has the seven heads and the ten horns. The beast that you saw was and is not and will ascend out of the bottomless pit and go to perdition. And it's Satan they're talking about. Those who dwell on the earth will marvel whose names are not written in the book of life. Those are non-Christians from the foundations of the world when they see the beast that was and is not and yet is. Here is a mind which has wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sits. There are also seven kings. Five have fallen. One is and the other has not yet come. And when he comes, he must continue a short time. And the beast that was and is not, and it is himself also the eighth and is of the seven and is going to perdition. Now what they're saying is there's seven kingdoms. Now when John wrote this, one of those kingdoms was still around. So their five was fallen, one was, and then there's this other one future. So we would read this as six have fallen. And now we got this one that we're watching right now take rise to power. But it says clearly that these are of, of Satan. Like it, it spells it out. They're of Satan. They're satanic kingdoms. And they're scattering Israel. All these kingdoms have destroyed, scattered, enslaved, or a combination of all those things, or just ruled over Israel and not let them rule and worship the way they want to worship. Uh, really, to many degrees, even to this very day. And what we're looking at is we're looking at Babylon. Babylon was the first to enslave Israel, um, and they just totally destroyed Israel. Um, then you have Persia, uh, then you have Greece, uh, then you have the Ptolemaic and Seleucus empires, and then in John's day you have Rome. And now in our day, you're going to have the final beast um, before Christ return. Now again, we spelled it out last time, it's not the final beast. A lot of people think when Christ return, that peace on the earth, it's all over. Oh, no, 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 no. There's a bigger, badder beast coming. It's the eighth, and that's what they're talking about after the thousand-year reign. 
So these seven kingdoms, these are seven, you know, and, and I'm making, you know, some, I mean, at their safe assumptions, because these, historically, these kingdoms really did do this to Israel. Um, these are some pretty safe assumptions to make that these were those kingdoms. Rome was definitely one of them at that time. So, well, the problem with all of this, and this is where people really fall short, is they're trying to point towards a person um, and there really in lies the, the problem because the lawless one will be revealed you know you don't have to worry about trying to figure out who he is he will be revealed um, and those whose names are written in the book of life will clearly see it and they will clearly understand and they will be warred against um, that revelation Jesus Jesus and Daniel clearly spell out as the abomination of desolation when you see that happen it's you know, you're either going to pick his side because you're going to be worshiping him like the rest of the world, um, or war is on and, and you're an outlaw, um, is how it's all going to play out. So, you know, as we move forward, I want to kind of, you know, there's our seven heads. Um, you know, don't point towards something crazy or a person. Those, it's seven kingdoms, uh, seven kings. These are people who have completely destroyed, enslaved, ruled over, etc. Israel. Now, let's move on to the seven mountains because this is kind of something that a lot of people really fall apart on because, uh, you know, what they're going to point at most of the time, they're going to say the seven mountains, they're going to point at Rome. You know, you're right and you're wrong. You're more wrong than you are right. Let's just say that. To suggest that Rome is this world beast that is made up of ten kings that can dominate the whole world, who can war against the beast? I mean, come on, We're, like, I'm so afraid of Pope Francis and his cardinals, like, they're going to rule the world, uh, they're going to rule the I mean, come on, it is not Rome, like, wake up, it's not, and I know you've been fed that your whole life, but again, you got to get that stuff out of your head, um, you know, again, I'm so scared of Pope Francis and his cardinals, they're coming to get at the whole world, but the reality is you're also correct. Because what these seven mountains are is they are a faith base. They are the Christian church. They are the seven churches. They are what these, this beast is made up of. It is made up of Christian nations. So to many degrees, you are correct. It can also be referred. Now, again, there's a lot of assumptions on these mountains. But... The sooner you come to grips with just pointing things, because what's happening here is God is not the God of confusion. It says clearly, but the angel said to me, why do you marvel? I will tell you the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carries her. These are seven kingdoms on which they sit on the Christian faith. This is what the Antichrist will do. He will literally ride the Christian faith to the temple where he will declare himself to be God. And the sooner you realize that, the better, you know, again, you know, is it Rome? You know, no, it's not Rome. I mean, come on. You can't say that Pope Francis is going to be the beast. I mean, that guy won't even, I mean, come on. He doesn't wear shoes half the time. It's something bigger, but it is the, it is the Catholic Church, and all all the churches stemmed from the Roman Catholic Church. Um, so I believe that the Seven Mountains are a representation of the Church. No, I do not think Rome or Pope Francis is the Antichrist and is the beast that will rule the whole world. But I do believe. That what they're saying here in the Seven Mountains is that this Christian faith, the, the, the Catholic Church, which all these religions broke away from, seven of them, according to Jesus, that is the head of this beast. Because guess who's taken over? Satan has taken over. And that's really how it's all going to play out. You know, and if you look at since Rome, How many people have been killed in the name of Jesus Christ? How many wars have taken place in the name of Jesus Christ? How the persecution of the Jews in World War II took place in the name of Jesus Christ? It is a satanic beast that rides 
the Roman Catholic Church is what it is. And you, you know, so again, it, you know, people like grab that and they say, oh my God, well, that's Rome. <laughs> yeah, no. No, Rome is not the people part. It is the spiritual part. So, you know, I know a lot of times when people look at this beast, they try to really just, well, this is that, and they're pointing at things. It represents so many things, so many things. Uh, it's not just one thing. I mean, what you're looking at here, and, and we'll, you know, because as we've kind of now, we're kind of wrapping up the seven heads, and we're going to look at the destruction of Babylon now, but or next. But what we're seeing here is we're seeing a harlot, a whore, a whore who is a gluttonous spender, who uh, drinks the blood of the saints, who is deeply engaged in sexual pornea and sex slave industry and adultery and the whole world gets their sex from this harlot as well. The kings of the earth commit fornication with her is what the Bible says. And this harlot, this whore, is riding the beast. It is riding the beast and this beast is is has been the same beast. It's a satanic beast that has gone from Babylon to Persia to Greece to Ptolemy to the Seleucius Empire to Rome and now to this empire that we're staring at right now um, and then there will be an eighth in a thousand years and that's what this is saying but then this beast will be made up of ten kings this this final head this final empire will be made up of ten kings and they are all of one accord and they all get their authority from Satan and they all give their authority to Satan. And why do we even see this? Because of the persecution of the Jews in Israel and the warring of the saints. That's the only reason we even see it. So I hope this helps. I'm sure I probably made a couple of people angry by laughing at Rome. I, I, I didn't. It, it's just you got to get it. Pope Francis is not the Antichrist. I mean, come on. I mean, I'm not saying he's a, a godly man necessarily, but I'm just saying that there you're not telling me that that guy, that that guy and his cardinals are going to somehow control the world armies. I mean, you know, come on. It's just not a thing. But you are correct in that this, the beast, the heads of the beast, the satanic piece of it is from the Christian church that stems from the Roman Empire. So... Um, any thoughts or comments on that, put it below. If you like this video, click like and subscribe. If you feel called to support this channel to Patreon, that link is also below. But the most important part of this channel is we take prayer requests, so don't ever hesitate to send that in. Thank you for watching this episode of God, Family, and Guns. And as always, love God, love your family, and love guns.